Hey guys, what's up? It's Rage of Sorrow here, and welcome to my new series, Inside the Mind of Rage of Sorrow. As the title suggests, I'll be going over a few methods in my video making process to help you understand why I choose to do certain things, such as using a certain attack style or method for a boss whenever I'm making a guide, choosing a topic for a vlog, and many other topics suggested by you, the viewer. For episode 1, I'll explain what I do to determine the best attack style, weapon, combat bar, and method to kill a boss when making a guide. I commonly get requests to make a certain boss guide using a certain attack style, other than the ones that I show off in the guides that I already have. The reason I don't make these guides using the suggested style is because while that attack style may work, the same in dealing damage to the boss, it can also affect the amount of damage that you can take from the boss. I prefer to have this balanced in favor of the player taking less damage than the boss taking more damage to increase your kills per trip. Let me explain how I do this. First off, as most people do with any sort of challenge, you want to know exactly what you are up against. When I do guides for bosses like those in the God Wars dungeon, I take into account the number of attack styles that the boss can use, as well as the attack styles of the minions. This helps determine what style will work best based on the majority of the attack styles that you can actually defend against. For example, Bandos has a general that is able to use melee and range, as well as a minion that can use melee, a minion that can use range, and a minion that can use magic. If you think about it in this manner, then using a melee setup is the obvious choice, since melee has a better defense against the other two styles, and since there is only one creature that can use magic to damage you a bit more than the others, since that is your weakness. By applying this to all of the bosses in the God Wars dungeon, you can determine what style is best to use for each one. It's the same reason I use magic for both Saradomen and Samurhawk. Both have a general that is able to use magic and melee. A minion that can use melee, one that can use magic, and one that can use range. By applying the method we did before with Bandos, it's obvious to use a magic setup since your defenses to the other two styles melee and magic, are higher than your defense to range, so it's obvious to choose that. The second thing I do is determine what weapon or spell will be most effective against the boss I am killing in the guide. To do this, I determine several factors such as the damage, accuracy, and attack speed of the weapon, as well as the boss's weakness and how effective my weapon will be against it. By doing this, we can determine what weapon will kill the boss faster, ensure that we get more kills per trip. The third thing I do is set up a combat bar suitable to the weapon or attack style I'm going to be using in the guide. I sometimes have to set up multiple ones because I use multiple setups for the weapons, such as two-handed weapons for melee and dual wielding. For example, if I choose to use a two-handed melee weapon for the guide, then I want to choose the abilities that will kill the boss quickly and to ensure that my trips are longer. By doing this and using a two-handed weapon, I can use many AoE abilities such as Cleave or even Quake to deal a lot more damage to all of the creatures in the room. This also coincides with a method I use in all of my God Wars dungeon guides that I call stacking. Stacking is when you cause the minions and bosses to overlap on a single space. By doing this, if you have access to Soul Split or the Vampirism Aura, then you can use AoE abilities like Cleave, Bombardment, or even Dragon Breath to attack all of the creatures at once. The result is you're able to heal a steady amount of HP each time you use these AoE abilities, and it causes you to use little to no food each trip. And by doing this, it will help extend your trips by a few hours. And, after we have applied all of those things when we are making a boss guide, it makes the gu boss guide more informative, more in-depth, and it's easier to understand. But, that's really all I have for this episode, guys. This has been episode one of Inside the Mind of Rage of Sorrow. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, and you want me to make more of these, 
then feel free to leave a like as well as a comment with your suggestion for the next topic. If you are new to my videos and you would like to see more, then feel free to subscribe and you won't miss any more of them. Until next time guys, I've been Regisaro, and as always, peace.